Michael D. Leonardo, also known as Mikey Scars. The government says he's a high-ranking member of the Gambino crime family. <laughs> No excuses with Michael D. Leonardo. I'm your host, RJ Roger. Michael, you ready for this one? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm always ready. I'm always ready. Um, I like the way you look today. You look very handsome. You're very uh, appointed, I should say. For you. I know you came from work and you're taking some time out during the day to, to uh, try to put this project together today. Yeah, for sure. You know what these are, you know why it's always, when you buy something, it's always good to keep the receipt because you can prove whatever you need to prove with it. Mm. Ah, very good. I like that analogy. Very good. It's a life lesson, a matter of fact. So I know where you're going. All right, this is interesting. But, it, but. You like to show receipts. I've noticed that about you. Documentation, yeah. pictures, books, things that can be, you like to show the receipt. Yeah. And give people back their words, as I always say. Exactly. So we're going to show some receipts today. All right. All right. You know, I want to show you a little video of uh, me and my wife years ago. You know, it's only a couple of seconds, uh, a couple of minutes, not even a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds. So I'm going to show you, show you this, show this video. Gonna do. We've never ever been able to ever make ends meet, have we? It's all your damn fault for not earning enough anyway. Oh, don't start. Don't you threaten me, you weak cow and little man. I've given you the best years of my life. You've got no drive, no ambition. That's your trouble. Right, this is a hold up. Get back. Well, come on. Anybody moves, she gets it. <laughs> all right i you know i take something different out of things that you got to consider the source where it comes from so i look at things a little differently more, more cerebral and when it comes to this the guy i try to look more cerebral he says i read people's minds but you don't have to you you read their body language which is really easy in some cases. Look how you're smiling. And you read their words. You define their words. Now, this video is interesting. Here he is dragging his, his wife into this, right? As a joke. And in this case, he's getting abused by his wife, right? In a public place. And there's a holdup. And instead of him correcting his wife, or standing up on his own two feet. Because this is, what I'm trying to do is make a correlation in his life, what he's done his whole life right now. With this video, he don't realize he's talking about himself right here. What did he do? Just like John saying things about him, right? Or anybody else in the street saying things about him. What did he want to do? He wanted them dead. Now we're talking about his wife as a little parody, a little joke here. But they come and hold up the bank. And he's going to have somebody else, like throughout his whole life, hurt the person that abused him. In this case, it's his wife. These are the things he, he lives, these fantasies in his head. He liked that because that is him. This is, I get abused. I have the power. In this case, the power was a stranger walked in with a gun and threatened to kill her. So what he did, he, he started to jump around so somebody else could do the killing for him or the revenge for him. That's Scammy Gravano, or should I say Grave Anno. That's him. <laughs> what do you think? Grave Anno? 
Yeah, grave. I never heard that one. Well, I, I, these things come to me every now and then. Grave Wano. <laughs> so we put a lot of graves, right? At least 19 graves, right? So. Shall we continue? Yes, we did. Um, if it wasn't for John Gotti, um, I, I mean, he changed it all, especially for me, Frankie Lucasio, Tommy Gambino. I think the entire mafia, I got some stories about him a little bit. I'm going to talk about when there's a few more people on the show. Um, you know, like a lot of people, they still rave about John Gotti and stuff like that. I might as well say it now. Um, you know, I found it weird years ago, uh, Willie Boy, the Indian Willie Boy, and uh, he was a cooperator. And he cooperated for years. He was a real tough guy, and he did a lot of things with a lot of different people. No, no question about it. But it seems like when he was writing, the only person he really was ratting on was John Gotti. So the lawyers and a few guys like us said, you know, he had such a disdain, such a dislike for John. And his only way to get even, he would be ridiculed because he was an Indian and all this sort of shit, that he only was ratting on John Gotti. And uh, years later now, I come back to um, this guy, Katzman, a Jewish guy who was, says he was John Gotti's adopted son or whatever he was. I knew who he was. He did, somebody, Jimmy Calandria, is doing an interview with him. Um, and he was ratting on John left and right, we found out now. Um, everything, John couldn't get out of the hole because every all the messages John would give him to give us, he would bring it to, to the government right away. Joe Watts did the same thing. Um, I cooperated. Um, the guy who told that he was in an apartment, I don't know who that was yet. The government won't give it up. And, uh, but he was ratting on John. So it seems like John, everybody loved him. I don't think so. I could name five people right off the top of my head who were, this hated him uh, enough to that they were confidential informants. And they had no reason to be an informant other than hate. In other words, they weren't in trouble and they were trying to get out of trouble. So there's no story behind them other than they hated them with a passion. And everybody thought that all these guys were close to him and uh, stuff like that. And that's coming out loud and clear now more and more. So what kind of guy could he have been if four or five of his closest guys ratted on him, so to speak? And um, it gives you a picture of what he was, a narcissist. The guy, he didn't give a fuck about the people who were close to him, obviously. And um, so I wanted to put that out, too, because it just hit me with so many different things and so many different people. Now, I knew the mafia guys hated him for their own reasons, but I didn't know about all of these informants. Uh, I didn't notice Lewis Katzman was uh, an informant. Um, I still can't find out who the guy was who was riding on the apartment. And uh, so maybe you guys should hear that, understand that. And that's the way I look at it. That, you know, I got no nobody oh. in my crew ever ratted on me. Let it go. Let it go. See what he just said? I get letters from people. What do you hold mean? The, yeah, hold it right there. And then we're going to go back a, a, a couple of seconds. This, this is what I want to address. RJ and everybody on here. In the in this video in the past, he calls me out for talking about him. About Sir Lie a lot. He calls me out that I have nothing to say about me, my own life, that I always talk about him. I do. He's my agenda. But very interesting. He said I was obsessed, obsessed with talking about him. Could be true, because I have to call him out on everything he lies about. Isn't it interesting? He spent about five minutes just now blasting John Gotti. How much everybody hated John Gotti. Who would he be without John Gotti's name in his mouth? He's still obsessed and still trying to tarnish this guy's image. This guy's so jealous 
that John stood up and died the way he did. Pure cause and Osho. This guy's obsessed with John Gotti. Everything he's ever said on here, the reason why he's here is because of John Gotti's name. You punish John Gotti. Talk about everybody hate. Who's, first of all, what boss ever is everybody loves you? What is it, a personality contest in, uh, in, the, in Cosa Nostra? You got to be kidding me. You talk about now that nobody ratted on you <clears throat> in your crew. No kidding. State the obvious. You killed them all, and who you didn't kill, you ratted on. So keep John Gotti's name out of your mouth and tell your stories. But you could never, because you'd be zero. You'd be a zero without John Gotti. And I'll give you an example. After you got the biggest break anyone could get in that life, or any criminal could get in that life, uh, playtime five years for 19 murders and everything else you did. Tell me what kind of success you were when you came home. What success did you have without the street? Going way back, Fatato, Louis Melito, who brought you around, saved your ass from the Columbos. He saved your ass from the Columbos. Johnny Rizzo, Louis Melito, and Tato. You ran away from there. You wanted to get away from it because they were going to hurt you. Regardless of your story. Your ass was saved. And now you reward Louis Molino, you killed him. So this pompous attitude that you have with everybody you left in the life, because after the life, you were a zero. You wrecked your family. How could you say you're somebody important? You're somebody that succeeds on his own. Look at you. You bake for $2. You tell people, thank you. I love you. They give you $2. Hold it up. I'll tell you, you want to send him a few bucks? I got, still got his bucket. I mean, you got to be kidding. You're begging on here like a hobo. <laughs> you're begging using John Gotti's name. You were zero after the street. You mounted to zero. What did you do without the street? That's all I can keep saying. The street was your vehicle to do everything you did in your life. And people did look up to you and love you. Like me. I was one of those guys. You were a powerhouse in the street at one time. But look what you are. Look what you are. You were a charlatan. You played everybody, and you're still playing people. That's why I didn't you scare me. I have a few names for you. But you're scamming people still. You talk about 600,000 viewers. Well, we'll get to that. But John Gotti in your mouth never stops, and you can't. And the reason why you're mad at me is because you know I call you out. You know I know the truth, and you know I know more. But it's going to come out. You keep it up. <laughs> RJ, if you like, you could continue. Let me ask you before we continue on. Um, we don't have a psychologist on this show, but um, the narcissism comment. Oh. Now, I've studied narcissism a lot. And, A, I can tell you, know, some of the most common people that call people narcissists? Narcissists usually call other people narcissists. But I will go further is that what a narcissist is, is a professional at justifying things. They can come up with an excuse every time for why what they did is okay or different and why you're wrong. You're so unaware of what you are that you actually really do believe the things that you say. You really do believe your lies and, and your justifications in the moment. It's not made up. Let me ask you about one point that he made. Yeah, do you exactly. think Do you think that there's something to be said by the people around him who were around John that were flipping on him and, and co cooperating informants? When Sammy makes that point, does that 
what does that say? The, he's this this guy create like I said, he's very good at doing this. He creates these scenarios. You think when the guy's a confidential informant, he only talks about one guy? They wouldn't know about every guy. That it's it's so bizarre his d- definition that everybody was a CI only for John. Talks about Lewis Cashman? Yeah. Sure. All right, the guy flipped. Was he given information? I don't know the extent of it. Sammy could be right. So uh, what does that mean, though? What does that mean? You flipped. You ratted. Not only on John. You had it only with John, right? You only met a John with the tapes. But you're out on a whole bunch of other people. You call yourself a cooperator. You're not a cooperator. You're a rat, just like me and everybody else who, who did what we did. We, if you're Cosa Nostra, you can never take the term rat away from you. So let's stop playing this, this niceties. You're no good. The life was no good. That's the part that I don't... If I, if I had one question that I would think everybody would ask when he's discussing because from my p- position if this was just a john versus sammy thing and he said you know what i'm here because this guy's talking too much upstairs and i'm not going to die here because of his I'm not dying on his mouth and he said now it's me it's mono we mono it's me against you and it stopped there maybe you could say Maybe he would have a point. Me and John played chess and I won or whatever. Um, but no one ever asked about, so w- what about Chin Giganti, Jimmy Brown, Faila, Johnny Gambino, Lorenzo Menino, all these other people that went to jail? Was that a checkers and chess thing? Was that, like, I had, like, how's that? That's never talked about, though. It's like, I'm okay because John did this to me. But there's a lot of other casualties that came as a result of his infraction with John. I agree. And and this is the narrative because he's good at it. And uh, we're chipping away at it. And I hope hopefully after we do these, these segments here, I don't know how long they'll be, but uh, after we do them, I hope there'll be a greater picture on, on this guy's really character and the veracity of his truth. Because he does has, have his truth. He really believes it. And we're going to show you how convincing he is. And then we're going to show you what he's really about, what the truth is from him. No, Nobody in my crew ever ratted on me. Um, I get letters from people. What? I mean, being fair, what does, I could see his point there. Tell me why he's wrong there. Tell me why. I, tell me why I'm wrong for thinking that could be a point to say. No one in my crew did to me what people in John's crew did to him. Who's to say there wasn't CIs around him? Who's to say that? They never came out because he flipped. Did the people who gave up the apartment or had any other stuff? There was a high echelon, at least one. We said this many times. At least one high echelon informant that was going to come out. And we knew it in the street before the arrest, their arrest. He didn't have to come out because Sammy flipped. So what does that mean? Uh, uh, John's the only bad guy, the only guy who had informants around him. That's bizarre. As we know, there's so much supposition and suspect about other people being CIs for, for decades, going back decades. What does that mean? I had them around me. In my house. So I, it, it it falls flat. It falls flat. Everybody's got the government has CIs all over the place, and he says it all the time. There's CIs all over. He's, it's ridiculous. It's not about the the, the individual is not an attack for John. He don't go say, "Hey, listen, I want to cooperate against John because I hate John." No, they got caught doing something. <laughs> they got caught doing something, and they and then they they became a confidential informant. And they gave up information, whether it be John, Sammy, me, or anybody else in the life. This is a false, false flat. It's another con. It's another scam by this guy for people to say that John was a bad guy. Everybody hated him. 
Not true. John got thousands of letters from people. Well, this goes back to my narcissism statement because you can see things the way that's beneficial to you, but you can't see the other way where it's not beneficial to you. So in one way you see, oh, look, no one in my crew ratted on me. People ratted on John, I'm good, John's bad. But you can see that clearly. But what narcissism will blur is your ability to say, look at John, he killed nobody in his crew. Look at me, killed half my crew. John good, me bad. So you can't see, excuse me, you can't see how the part that shines a light on you. So I would say this, if we're going to use the term good, bad, what's good? The man who his friends turn on him or the man who kills all his friends? Sammy did to his friends what he's saying all John's friends were doing to him. He just killed him. John's friends just told on him. So assuming Sammy's true, I mean, assuming what he said is true, Sammy did everything he's saying the people did wrong to John, but worse. Well, and look what he says. He says, my guys love me. Nobody ratted on me. But what was his pretense? Mike DeBout was a liability. Nicky Cowboy is a liability. His brother-in-law was a liability. We could just keep going. So liability means, and we did shows on this, like just like everybody else in this genre did, that they potentially, because they're drug addicts, would rat. Potentially. Not ratted. So the guys that loved him, that he thought in his paranoid mind may rat, he killed them. So the, the guys got rewarded for loving him, so he killed them. He didn't give an opportunity to even rat on him. You got to be kidding me. This guy's sick. He didn't even give him a chance to go bad. You, how much did you love them if they loved you? He brags about it all the time, how his crew was going to die for him with Paul, ready to go to war and sacrifice their lives. He did. Again, he killed them. He did. You did. He did give. Uh, get, he. They did give their lives for this guy. But he, he's so nuts. He's trying to justify some guys flipping on John. So what? What'd you do? <laughs> well, that's what I'm trying to say. Why does someone flipping on John carry more weight than Sammy killing many, many people who were close to him and were part of his family? How does that skill? go higher people some of john's friends friends flipped on him i killed all my friends though i don't know why you would even discuss this stuff personally i i would think you would just leave that alone well look rj we talked about the huck video in the past right huck his own crew a guy he says love them right how much did huck love you you said huck loved you your whole crew loved you he went out there to kill you why because you rat it. Huck was causing Austria. You're a rat. He was doing his job. You have no right being mad at him for going out there and doing that because you would have done the same. If you didn't flip, you would have killed Huck. You would have sent the team out there. You wouldn't have lasted that long. And you know that. So this is this is the way this bends things is, is amazing. And he's good at it, but we're gonna take him apart. We're going to keep taking them apart. And if somebody gets tired of hearing it, skip, go watch our next show. It just seems like time and history is bringing it out. There's people who want to talk about history. They bear about me a lot. They're like, they're, they're, they're not even psychiatrists. They're mind readers. They'll tell you what John was thinking, what I was thinking, what this guy was thinking. What the fuck were you, a mind reader? Now, that's the point that I need to interject here, because the only thing I can say that we had some the a theory-based discussion on that was just a theory, and we knew that going into it. It was a psychological show that we wanted to try to figure out, because it's the biggest open question. Why didn't John kill Sammy with all the evidence that he had, the smoking gun? So that was a fun theory-based show. But I'm assuming that he's referring here to the Gotti tape 15-part 
section, which was very detrimental to the Sammy legacy. It was, you know, 16 hours we went over of, of tapes. We put just two out on YouTube, and it's our, our biggest viewed show. Over 160,000 people watched these, uh, these uh, just, just part one or so. But I, I have to clean this up. John said, you got asbestos, you got carpets, you got rugs, you got Italian floors now. Which one of my kids started up a, um, tell me somebody around me who started up a business. Sam, uh, uh, he's upstairs saying, Sammy's got green eyes. He's, he's, he's creating an army within the army. We wasn't reading John's mind. We were reading John's words. Not mind reading, transcript reading. All I did was read those words and say, so I didn't know what Minka meant. I didn't know what you cocksucking yellow dog meant. So I asked you, hey, Michael, break these things down in common or vernacular. And you put in layman's term, you took gangster speak and put it into layman's terms for the common man to understand what John was saying. That's it. We read 15 hours of transcripts, not John's mind. It bothers me when people say that, that I do take that one because everything... He said, I didn't want to kill Louis Melito. Sammy wanted me to do that. The Bono, he did nothing. He's dying because he refused to come in when I called. Like, John was saying these things. Everything that we're saying that's coming from this channel, John said it. Now, somebody sent us a, a short clip video uh, that I never heard before. And it was probably from some documentary that somebody extrapolated and took this little snippet out and sent it to us. We could probably put it in there. And it goes to what you just said uh, and what he says about people around them and all this other nice stuff. He talked about Jack and the Act that come on by on Tuesday nights and Joe Watts come on by on Tuesday nights. And Joe Watts was his brother. And they both didn't like John. Joe the Cat was uh, on his – imagine Joe the Cat on his hands and knees in Sammy's kitchen in front of his wife and his kids begging Sammy about John. It's absurd. Now, what did I say then? Army with an army, Tuesday nights, Frankie Lowe agreeing with John, Frankie Lowe bringing it up on tape with John. No mind reading, just interpretation of what was being said. What, what does this clip say? John says... I told him to slow it down. I talked to him. Everything I said, I never heard this clip before. And he says, I have spies. John says he has spies around him. That was a Tuesday night that I told you those guys weren't Sammy's friends. They were John's spies going there to see what was going on. And he did videos about how much Joe Watts was his brother and Jack and the actor and Joe LaFord begging him that he hated John. These are all, this is all lies. This is to try to tarnish the Gotti name in his mind for that legacy. Because he has none. The legacy he has is taking $2 from people off here and tell them like, he loves them. <laughs> but you know what? There's this thing about over and over. He talks in this video about me talking over and over or somebody talk over. It's like repeating a lie after a while it becomes the truth. I guess that's what he was trying to say. But his over and over are lies. His stories. So he's distorting the truth until you and I and Mikey showed up on here. So the over and over that he's talking about is him, not me. I'm just breaking it down with you. Howdy Doody story. Howdy Doody did uh, uh, a video calling me a liar like he does every day. I told a simple story that I was with Carmine Persico, the Colombo family. And one day with Shorty Spiro, his nephew, Tommy Spiro, same name, and me, we were standing outside of a club, downtown Brooklyn, outside of his club. And uh, somebody was coming there, Andrew, Rus uh, Andrew Russo, Mersh, they called him, Mush, Mersh. Mersh. And uh, who was coming? James Kahn. Now, he was bringing James Kahn there. He was, Andrew Mush was a Hollywood type of guy. He was a captain, but he dealt with a lot of Hollywood people. And he brought James Kahn down to introduce him to Carmine for Carmine Persico's blessings 
for him and he would help him get into the movie The Godfather. That's all I said. Hold it right there. Howdy Doody saying that I lied. Oh, yeah, yeah, he was standing there. He was in a meeting. Uh, interesting little point. He just said Andrew was Andrew Russo. His name is Mush, not Mersh. Um, he just said Andrew was a captain at this time. And uh, Carmine was a captain, right? At this time, let's say. Why would Andrew have to go to him and not go to the Joe Colombo directly? Why would he have to go to Carmine to get Carmine's blessing? A captain goes to get another captain's blessing? It's a small little point, but go ahead, let it roll. So if you want facts, I wasn't lying. That's a fact. So Howdy Doody makes up these fucking things and talks about me all the time. Hold it right there. He seems to be. Okay. Andrew was that close with James Conn. What did I dispute on that? Zero. What I disputed was he was there. That's a lie. I mean, you can read all the articles about James Kahn getting writing letters for Andrew and his family and how close they were. There's pictures going back to the 70s at a church of baptism and all of that, I believe, with uh, Frankie Valley and uh, other actors and, and singers and stuff like Andrew was. He had his hand like a, some other Colombo guys in, in the Hollywood stuff, even till today. So um, I didn't dispute that. That's not a lie. I never said that didn't happen. What I said was, he wasn't there. He was not there. That's a story he made up. He puts himself there. Why would you lie? That's you. You, you preface this. Why would you lie? We're going to prove why you lie. <laughs> we finish this. You just lie. That's why you're Sir Lie a lot. You're the king. I got to think of another name for because Sir is is under king. That's being knighted. Just you become a sir, by a king or a queen. But I got to, I got to bump you up. I got to find another title for you. Obsessed with me. Every other fucking word out of his mouth is me. Michael, this, this is again. I know we keep, I keep going back to this narcissism thing, but this is what I'm talking about. Like, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. If we're gonna compare the two. You know, this thing of like, I'm allowed to get 100 million views talking about John Gotti. I'm allowed to get a New York Times bestselling book talking about John Gotti. I'm allowed to sit with Diane Sawyer, Patrick Bet David, do documentary films, do film projects talking about John Gotti. You just better not talk about me. Well, look, this, he's back in hell if you could take a look. He's got all that red, deep, sinister look. And he's got a bull there with the horn straight up like the devil looks. The owl. See? It's out of the med. So he's back in hell where he belongs. See, he likes that. He thinks he's going to heaven. You know, how's that guy looking up and down and saying, you're sitting in hell every day. You want to be over there? You want to be you're supposed to have like, like butterflies around him or something if he wants to go to heaven. It's how you're talking about him that's bothering him. It's not that he's being talked about that's bothering him. Anyone that didn't want to be talked about would not be public. But it's how you're being talked about that is bothering him. Sammy's talked about every day. He's in mafia podcasting. Everyone's talking about Sammy. The whole genre is talking about Sammy. But he's not nicknaming the whole genre and talking about everybody. What you're saying is doing something different. Well, he, he's, he admits that he's the biggest guy on the block. And he's built the, he's built himself off of redundantly, we'll say it again, the Gotti name and all these stories he tells. Again, a lot of them are good stories that are true. It's just how he alters them. This is what we are challenging. Like being at that meeting when James Kahn walks in the room. That's... Pure fan. You go watch the, the the program, the offer. Then come back. Um, and when you get that obsessed, hold it up right there. You are that hold obsessed? Just to throw, just to throw this in, and we talked about this with the Joe Colombo video. Michael Francesi was there. Why didn't Michael ever say he's seen Sammy at all these meetings years ago? 
Why didn't, what, where was Michael then? Michael's a, 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 an impactful figure then with the press calls. Does Michael Francesi said he sat down with James Kahn and Andrew Russo? He was very close with those guys. Andrew, uh, uh, Jimmy Angelina and those and that crew. Got to be kidding me. You know, he never sat down with Sammy and this. He never was hung out with Sammy. He didn't go to the rallies. I was 14, 15 years old. We were going to the rallies, vandalizing things. My friends and I, along with other guys. Where was he? He was never there. He wasn't walking around, Heidi, 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 oh, the FBI's got to go. He was never there. This proximity that he puts himself with Junior Persco is bizarre. These are stories he made up. Who's going to contradict them? Who? Chris Colombo could. When did Chris? Chris Colombo was a young guy. He wasn't in the street around his father. Uh, Chris could, Chris could, I don't know if he did any shows on Sammy, but Chris could do a show on this. See how many times he's seen Sammy around. Uh, and Michael could too. Michael's alive. He's here. Why didn't he ever tell stories of him and Sammy high-fiving years ago? Come on. Falls flat. Why don't you come down and see me man to man, face to face, with your fucking obsession and talk to me? And uh, so I don't want to get too far with him or <laughs> anything else. It just sometimes bugs me and annoys me a little bit. It's like a fly. And for some reason, I can't knock that fucking fly off my shoulder. Grow the fuck up and be a man and talk about yourself. You need this. And I know why you can't talk about yourself. You're nothing. The government says he's a high-ranking member of the Gambino crime family. Your history was nothing. And you want to be famous. Keep it up. I know a lot about you, your brothers, your family. You also said I fucked Fonzie's Gumada or wife or somebody. Now, I never did that. You said I admitted that. I never admitted anything like that. I never recall anything like that. Number one. Number two, if the Funzi is Funzi Terry, um, he was born in 1904, bro. 41 years before me, I was fucking his girlfriend. I mean, it doesn't even make sense. If I said that, maybe I was on drugs or something because I didn't say it, but it's ridiculous. Even the statement is fucking ridiculous. And then he was a street boss. I'd have to be out of my mind to do something like that. And she would have had to be 30, 40 years older than me. I mean, the whole thing is so retarded. And you're, t you're telling people that I did this. I admitted to that. Well, I'm not admitting to it. First of all, I wouldn't do that to any maid guy, any friend of ours. I would never go with their wife or daughters. Um, and this story is absurd. But the, why I'm even answering it, because when you say things over and over and over and over and over again, sometimes some people want to believe it. And you want me to answer so that my 600,000 followers would come and see what you're saying. So you're trying to get them over there. My people are good people, honest people, and they know the mob. They would go on your channel if that's up to them. But I'm sure they would throw up after a week or two on your show because they're not stupid people. They would know everything you say is fucking fake. So I'm going to answer that much. I don't want to go further. I don't want to say his name. I don't want to say nothing. But I can't, the howdy doody fucking face, the face just... I keep seeing Howdy Doody. I see his fucking face. And uh, I'd like to push it in a little bit with this, bro. With this. Hold on. No. A lot to unpack there. A lot to unpack there. Go ahead. And I'll be uh, completely honest. When I saw this, I said, even though I heard it and we talked about it when it first happened, but when I heard this, I said, did we fuck up? The passion and the seriousness in his voice about Funzy. And I really was scratching. I'm like, what the hell, man? I, 
And because again, we pride ourselves in at least having a informed, credible opinion. Go. Well, a lot of interesting stuff he said in there. Um, the famous part, as we know, with the video went away. The video part. No, I got uh, the video. Okay. I just put it down. All right. The part about being famous, as we know, we don't go on anybody's platforms. He's all over the court. He's got his skirt up. He's all over the court uh, doing things, promoting himself. We've never done it. I, we don't have to defend ourselves with that little minutious point. Um, the obsession part, the repeating part, it's all in his mind, like we addressed earlier. He really convinces himself and others just the way he did just now. Now, you imagine going to a guy like John Gotti and being as passionate as he was about killing Louis Valido. About as passionate as he was about killing Louis DeBono. As passionate as he was about killing Mike DeBat. As passionate he is about everything he does. Look at his presentation. He's so convincing in his mind. He believes in himself. The denial. As he stated earlier, my guys didn't rat on me. Well, you convinced yourself they were going to hurt you and rat on you. And you took their lives in spite of you saying now again that they loved you. This guy is so convincing, RJ, that when you called me the other day and we were talking about it, you know, we got spies in camps too, right? I think some of them come from Arizona. And um, very interesting how we, we, we got a follow-up video. And as convincing as he is, people should, his followers, 600,000 that he brags about, really should digest what we're about to show them about what this guy can do. If you want to, you want to take him to a Stanley Kubrick movie and that's what you want to watch or a, uh, what's the guy's name who writes uh, read those books, the scary books, the guy from New England, that was his name. Did The Shining, what's his name? Stephen King, Stephen King. You want, you want to listen to Stephen King and, and go through Sammy with his stories? They're great. He could do. He could definitely make Hollywood. I said this before. I'm not even being facetious, because he has a real evil, cunning mind, and this is how he convinced people his whole life. He's done it, it's just the way you, you're seeing it right now. Some people, you know, from a lawyer years ago, I seen a sign on the wall. Before engaging mouth, put brain in gear. I probably seen that over 35 years ago. And every time I'm trying, I'm going to make a comment that could be borderline controversial. I try to do that. It doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes the wrong things come out of your mouth. But I, you, you got to put your your mind to before it comes out of here. The reason why he don't have to do that because he's so convincing, and nobody challenge him. So here we are, and here he is. All his followers that he brags about, should see this. And you see what this guy's about. He's scamming you and he's lying to you on an evil basis. His premise is all evil. Did you know Funzy Thierry and his girlfriend, Rita Berta? Um, I knew Funzy uh, Thierry. I want, Rita's got to be dead by now, so I could say this. Rita was, I, I knew her too. She was a blowjob in the neighborhood. I think I got one or two blowjobs off her. But uh, I'm thank God that what's her name didn't find out. But uh, yeah, I did know them. Uh, <laughs> everybody's moaning. I think I'm in trouble. Imagine. Uh, My but, it, but she's here. I can't even. That's stunning to me, though, because I, Michael, if you play the first part, the anger towards you, I'd have to be fucking crazy. 
He's an acting boss. I would never treat a friend that way. You would never have thought we're going to play this. It's not us saying it. He not only he names the situation again in both videos. He says Fundy Funzi Thierry. It's T I E R I, not Terry. That's what he means. He don't he, the, the guy's discombobulated at times, but that's who he means. And um, there it is. There's no more compelling truth than the truth that comes out of his mouth. Like I said, before engaging mouth, put brain in gear. He's so used to convincing people that you didn't hear that. You didn't see that. This is what I told you just now. That's what counts. He's a major, major manipulator of human beings, and he's cost a lot of lives, which is, uh, and, and families that are still out there suffering from this guy. Uh, I have a lot more to say on this, and uh, he, he can't go unchecked. He just checked himself. Now, he says he's, he would have to be crazy. He's on medication. Well, if you're not, you better start taking loads of it. You know where he gets stuff out there, right, Sam? I think he's still got some of your hooks maybe over there from the ecstasy ring. Maybe you could find uh, some stuff that's some psychotics. Like, you, what about the pill line? See, so since you got out of prison off the pill line, maybe uh, maybe you got to find another pill line in the street. Because you need it. For many different reasons, you need it. Should be an interesting live, Michael. You think so? Let's see. That's maybe a little robust. Yeah, could be. You know, it's another thing. Did you know he asked the Sheriff Joe Arpaio for a couple of pink underwear when he was out there? I wonder if he still got those pink underwear. Did you know Sheriff Joe used to put, when he locked somebody up, they all had to wear pink underwear? Sammy got them. I think he asked for them. And another little point about him and the veracity of his truth or non-truths, I should say, is he don't know who Tony C is, who was a skipper with us, in his tenure, in his time, who was the club a couple of times a week. He didn't know who Joe O'Corey was, was there three times probably a week, Monday, Thursday, and Saturday out in Queens, besides running one of the biggest unions in the city. Joe Zingara, legend. You don't know Joe Zagaro was another captain? Mike Medallio. They appointed him. Him and John appointed him as skipper. Bobby, he didn't appoint Mike. His replacement, Mike, died. I went to the wake with Jackie and John Gotti, senior, with others in New Jersey. Old time skipper. That administration made Bobby Kaburka captain after he died. How do you not know all of this? He said this on the show. We don't have to show it. We got it rained in on our Patreon show. It rained on us about him and, and his, his not knowing these gentlemen. How credible is, is he? He makes it up. You know, I, I, I made a little bullet point list, which I usually don't do because everything's in my head anyway. I really don't need it. But, you know, it, it's just outrageous what he does and the people he still hurts. So, you know, I'm not a crusader. I'm not looking for glory. I'm not looking for fame. Am I looking for fame? You know that. You know the answer. I'm just looking to right this ship. I've done a lot of wrong in my life. This guy's hurt too many people after the fact. I still got more to say. And if he says he's going to go after my family, my brothers, <laughs> hey, bring it. Bring it. My brothers were criminals. One brother died in the street like a man. He died for that life. His family still suffers. My other br brother did three bids. So you whatever you want to say about my brothers or anybody else in my family, I'm here. Bring it. Just remember, just crack that door again. 
You cracked it to get me on this platform by talking about my brother Robert and other people, Mike the Bat, Louis Melito, Dickie Cowboy, and everybody else. You inspired me. Inspire me one more time that I'll cross, I'll cross that Rubicon because there won't be no coming back for you. And if you know what the Rubicon is, go get a book and see when that happened and who crossed it. So everybody could giggle on that end. I hope you're all giggling after this because you were set up. I feel you were set up. You were set up for failure. How do you not know you had that video that came out of your mouth? How do you know your team didn't know you said that? Or you were just a joke and they just laugh and giggle at you all the time? Maybe that's what you are. Maybe you're a joke in their eyes. And again, um, there's spies all over the place. There's a little saying, over the tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. Thank you, guys. We'll see you Saturday for the live. Michael, close it out. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was enlightening to have you one here and open up some minds and just put history right where it belongs. Not in that guy's camp. In the world to digest. God bless. Be well. <laughs>